Hello, I'm Kieran Lynch and welcome to Ovicast, the Chocolate Sheep Podcast. Each episode will bring you less insights, advice and technical updates for the sheep industry. We're switching back this week to health focus in particular parasites and we're joined by Seamus Fagan from the Department of Agriculture's Regional Veterinary Laboratory in Athlone to discuss fungus contortus infection in sheep. Jim starts off explaining how the parasite, sometimes referred to as the barber's poleworm, has an impact on sheep. With cases appearing around the country this year, we discuss the symptoms, transmission, as well as control options and diagnosis within the flock. We finish up with Seamus encouraging farmers to be vigilant when it comes to flock health issues and to investigate them further and seek advice where needed. We start off, however, with Seamus explaining a little bit more about this parasite and the impact it can have on sheep. It's a parasite, but it, I suppose it's unusual in the sense that what we tend to see is just sudden deaths. So farmers are finding sudden deaths. So the animals often have been scoured or anything here. And homuncus is usually considered a more warm weather parasite than traditionally we'd have thought we'd get in Ireland. But it's appearing pretty much, in my eyes at this stage, anywhere over the country, but will be more focused probably in the southeast or that, Kieran. But yeah, that's generally the ones that I've seen here in Athlone have been sudden deaths. And the big finding there for lads is very anemic, so very pale eye. Um, these are blood sucking worms. They live in the stomach and they basically suck blood and they can grow in numbers very quick. And if a sheep gets a lot of them at one time, that's the first sign is often a sudden death. So it's a bit unusual compared to other parasites that we're hearing. It, it's very much going to be new on the radar. For, some might be aware of it. So the Barber's Pole Worm, I suppose, is another name for it. But it, it's new on the radar for most of us. As you said, look, it's a stomach worm. But in some way, Shim, it's, it nearly behaves a little bit more like liver fluke. It's, it's blood sucking. So it's going to have a more dramatic effect a lot quicker. Yeah, I suppose it is a bit more like liver fluke in the, in the sense that you have your acute which is a sudden death, the same as acute fluke off. And the first sign lads have of acute fluke is sudden death. And then if it's a bit more chronic, you actually get the same sign as in uh, where the worms are not as a big a number, but they're in there sucking blood the whole time. And you'll actually get bottle jaw, you know, the edema under the chin and that similar to fluke. Now, I suppose the one thing that you kind of use to some degree is the time of year, but I agree, Kieran. It does act probably more like fluke, liver fluke, in the presentation than typical what we call stomach worms. Just like when you mentioned the weather and time of year, it's another worm that does tend to like the autumn period a little bit more, and it's it's round about now we could see its effects on farm. You touched on it there, Seamus. Like it, it expands rapidly in number, so obviously when you're seeing them it's it's a case of mortality but that is not uncommon with it i've seen a warning went out in the uk for this as well the numbers can rise quite rapidly it can have a quite severe effect in a very short period of time homuncus contortus is probably the most in a sense the most dangerous or the you know in places like australia it's responsible for the vast majority of their production losses it's called over there the nemesis of nematodes and one of the main reasons you've touched on that is one, it produces a huge amount of eggs very quickly. So sometimes that can be a hint. If you've done a fecal egg count and you see uh, very, very high egg count numbers, that's a, that's maybe a hint that Timonchus is knocking about because um, no other strong isle worm will produce as high of egg counts. And the other thing that allows it a huge advantage is how quickly its life cycle happens. So from the day an egg is laid, in 20 days, that egg can be a fully functional adult and lay in its own eggs. So that allows it to, numbers to rise very rapidly in a flock under the right conditions. And unfortunately, because it's, it has that high of reproduction rate, it means that it can become resistant to uh, anthelmintics very quickly as well. And like just when we're talking about egg counts, we're talking egg counts here in the thousands. You're not talking a couple of hundred, it'll be maybe several thousand in some cases. I've seen them up to 20,000, Kieran. Yeah. So, you know, so if you see Anton, I suppose maybe just as a definitely Anton over 5,000 is probably, hold well on, I, I need to consider a Moncus here. And I know for a lot of people, 5,000 seems outrageous even, but, you know, definitely, you know, even if you're going over two, 3,000, you definitely just have homuncus in the back of your head, you know. It's, it's, a real, it's a real red flag that there's something else going on. Look, just we're, we're touching on that, like 
as opposed to other summer crawl machinimas, sheep don't build up resistance or immunity or resilience to this. So it'll affect adult sheep just the same. Yeah, the, there is some level of immunity, but it's quite short lived. So unfortunately, yeah, that's another hint, I suppose, is that uh, sometimes it's adult sheep we see in here that have died of it as much as we see lambs, which would be again an unusual pattern for the rest of the stomach worms. And again, as you mentioned earlier, Kieran, it would tie in more with a fluke pattern. Um, so that's kind of why we, um, you know, it's, it can be harder to deal with because you don't get that buildup of immunity. And Seamus, like you've seen some of these appearing on farms right throughout the country. Look, it's something we've touched on a number of times. The mode of transport, how they come onto the farm in the first place. It's, it's other sheep bringing them on, essentially. So the, the, the importance of quarantine really is highly hit for this one. Yeah, it, it, quarantine is so vital on any farm here. And, you know, it's, it's the key to keeping your flock healthy in so many ways. And... Once again, yeah, Hamonkas can't get onto your farm any other way except pretty much in another sheep or in a sheep you've bought in. So having proper quarantine, which means keeping them separate, getting advice on what to dose them with and keeping them separate and maybe even, you know, do an egg count after you've dosed them after a fortnight or that to check that these sheep you've brought on are now fully um, emptied out of anything that could potentially bring you know especially hamonkus but anything onto your farm just like if we talk about that and control options james what are the control options for hamonkus yeah the control options it's it's again to me you know no matter what parasites you're talking about or anything you know control options really start with the basics in any animal which is you know having good healthy animals that uh, will build you know that have natural kind of immunity that they're well fed, that things like lameness, anything that will compromise a sheep stress wise will make her very prone to become what I call a huge egg factory for any of these things. But among us, you know, the, like keeping it out of your farm is definitely the number one thing, Kieran. Follow that one on, like after diagnosis of a, your regular warmers work, um, some of the flucocytes, your clazantal based flucocytes, James, that's a control option as well, possibly. Where's yeah, the confirmed so case? Clizantal will work for it, you know, and, and we've probably, because of in a lot of situations in Ireland where Clizantal is used as a fluke, it, it's helped to clear out any homuncus that might be overwintering in the sheep. So we probably, you know, find it good that way, that, it, um, that you may be getting a double bang for your buck if you're using Clizantal to control fluke, is that it did actually control homuncus as well for you. I suppose that's where the geography came into it. The more fluky areas that would tend to use them type of products probably were controlling, whereas it, it tended to proliferate in more drier regions that probably weren't treating for fluke in previous years. The geography or the type of weather the fluke likes is probably quite the opposite to what homuncus wants. So Shame, I suppose for anyone out there that maybe suspects that they might have something else going on or there's yews they're after losing a couple um, you know, the faecal egg count still is a useful diagnostic tool in this case. Yeah, and look, there's getting good advice. And at the minute that there's a targeted advisory service in animal health for parasites run by Animal Health Ireland, where, you're, where there's a free visit for any farmer who wants to on parasite control and egg counts will be done and advice given. And all these things are usually very specific to a farm. We've mentioned here and there, you know, fluke and what land has and what doesn't. So this uh, tar has a free, it's free, you know, as well worth considering for anyone. And obviously then there's yourselves for advice, local vets for advice, and plenty of other stuff on the, like on the Chagas website and other places like that. But at the minute, it is an opportunity for farmers to get a free visit and get a good discussion going on their parasite control. Two free fecal egg counts, and I think you know it's a, it's a very useful initiative. James, I suppose at the end of this, it just goes to highlight that look, it's an ever evolving field and things are changing, but it's certainly something else to be very aware of. It also probably highlights the fact that we need to keep a regular check on what's going on in the flock. Yeah, like the importance, while well, we're highlighting Hamonkas here today, you know, we. The correct diagnosis of what's going on in your flock is very important. So, you know, getting good advice, um, you know, uh, a, a farmer in Year Better Farmer program once said to me, Kieran, you know, never waste a dead sheep. So, you know, get postmortems done, figure out what's going on. 
Um, and similarly, once we have a correct diagnosis, you know, we need to get back to, you know, Chagas put out the four actions there. So we, you know, just while we're highlighting this, we don't want people to just go out and start blanket treating yours. You know, you need to figure out what's going on. Um, you know, quarantine, use regular fecal egg counts, figure out um, what worms you do or don't have and dose accordingly. Couple of the basics. Look, I think it's a very useful piece of information. Over there, certainly something to put on the radar. For anyone who's seen any of that sudden deaths or sudden losses, it's well worth investigating, and it could be a possible cause of it. Look, James, it was great getting you on. It's good to get that update. Certainly one to put on the radar. Really appreciate you coming on today with us. Thanks, thanks yourself, Karen. Good to talk. Okay, we're going to finish the episode up at this point. It's another health challenge that we just need to be aware of in flux. Hopefully you don't experience it. For anyone that does, though, it's important to seek advice again, as James indicated towards the end. Any sudden deaths or issues within a flock, it's always worth to investigate them and nipping that in the bud early. That's it for me for this episode. Again, for any updates from our sheep program, keep an eye on our Twitter page at Chocolate Sheep. I'm Kieran Lynch. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe and get notified of any new episodes.